uh, this is Warp. Um, I thought I'd take a little bit of time and do a, a basic demo on uh, one of the key features and one of the reasons that I made VP uh, was to be able to navigate and get around uh, the interface of the Kurzweil very quickly. And so I thought I'd, I'd do a video that really concentrated on that topic and kind of showed you um, some of the features available to allow you to, to reason um, uh, while you're using the, the Kurzweil interface and uh, improve the workflow and so forth. So well, let's get started. Um, right now you should see uh, uh, VP on the screen. It's in the shrunken uh, mode right now. Um, one of the features that I'm adding back in to the VP, uh, to the next VP release is uh, the notion of VP shrinking or getting larger depending on whether or not you're editing a program or a setup, uh, which you'll see here in a sec. Um, but anyway, uh, one of the very first things I want to show you is just how to get around while you're in program mode. Um, you can, kind of like using the scroll wheel or something like that on the hardware interface, you can still hit these plus and minus buttons like this and you can hit up and down arrow here and um, and these guys I think uh, you know still move by a page the left and right arrow so all that stuff pretty much works the same which was intentional because I wanted the uh, people that knew how to use the hardware interface to also know how to use the fast programmer interface uh, at least basically from the very beginning so but really uh, once you get into it, um, a much better way to browse around is simply to click into the type in window and just type the number of the program that you want to go to, or at least uh, the basic area where you want to go. Like, you know, you can just search around. It's, you look and you say, well, 56, that's not it. Maybe it was 66. You can just click 66 here in the type in area and it goes to 66. Um, and another thing I want you to notice that generally speaking, whenever you type something in and do change a value or something, like in this case I hit uh, 66 and went to the steel string guitar program, the old setting goes back into the type in box. So, and it's selected, so all you have to do is hit enter again and you could toggle back and forth between the previous value and the current value. And the editors work that way, everything, pretty much everything in VP works that way with respect to the type inbox. So uh, that's one thing just to, to keep in mind. But uh, uh, it, it's just a really nice way to, to browse around and it's just much faster than, than uh, actually going over to these uh, up and down arrows or even using the, the, the wheel on the Kurzweil interface itself. So. So let's say, uh, okay, I want to go to uh, program 33, which is uh, synth fretless. Um, well, I type into there, and I type 33 in, and I get, I get to the program uh, very quickly that way. Okay, then I go here and I click edit, and uh, I see what I normally expect to see, and that is uh, the, the window gets larger because this is a program that we're editing. And so for programs and setups, VP has a, an extended screen to allow us to uh, navigate around in these very deep areas of the vast architecture. Um, now, the first thing you'll notice is that uh, VP really, it, it doesn't have any uh, information cached down here for these screens. So this is the first time on this machine that I've actually edited this program. Um, had I edited them before, it would have screens that would be cached on my hard drive so I could see them here immediately. Um, but that's uh, no worries because there are a couple of buttons up here, the F and the F star, which allow me to fetch um, all the information in a layer, which would be the blue F, or to fetch the information in all the layers, which is, in, is, which is this red F star, which means everything. And I'll show you how that works. So if I just click F star, what it does at one time, it very quickly uh, goes through the machine and fetches all of the layers and all of the screens 
on all of those layers very quickly and um, it really doesn't take very long and to prefetch like this is very useful because once you get into the workflow um, you don't want to have to worry about you know waiting a couple of heartbeats for it to navigate and fetch those screens for you you want to be able to just um, keep clicking around between screens and thinking about what you want to do and you know trying experiments and so forth so if you have to wait a couple of heartbeats for a screen to load um, it's um, just not as good as, as it is to preload it the other thing you get when you preload everything is you see that the controller lists here um, which tell me about all the controllers for all the layers and so forth are completely filled out so immediately now I've got a full vision I have a full um, I can fully observe what is going on here uh, in this program uh, by looking at the control flow list I can go over here and look at these this what I call the moniker drop down which allows me to see all the different layers and uh, when they're enabled and what ranges they're enabled for and the outputs and so forth so I can very quickly see everything that's going on I can click here uh, I can jump between layers very quickly and the neat thing about this is that you notice up here at the top the display what I'm really navigating to on the curse file itself is not changing this is really uh, kind of an out-of-band thing I'm able to actually look instantaneously and see what's going on in this program without touching if you will the actual interface of the Kurzweil at all okay so while I'm in here looking around reasoning and I'm figuring out what I want to do as soon as I touch one of these fields okay like let me uh, click this one okay so as I touch one it actually you can see up here at navigate went to layer 2 and it went to this page and it went to this field physically on the Kurzweil okay so now it's ready to make a for me to change a parameter um, and I can I can either use this screen down here that I started with or I can use this screen up here it, they're really the same so let's say my eyes are down here at the lower part of the screen I just click and I say okay I want to change this to G phase one or something so it changes and notice it changes in both places so that's what we would expect um, so now um, okay I also want you to notice again that the last value which was LF01 LF uh, yeah LF01 that was deposited here in the typing area so I can just go down here here and toggle back and forth between these two as much as I want which is very useful if I'm programming and I want to audition um, the program and here are my changes incrementally as I make them so that's kind of cool um, another thing that you can do is actually use the undo and redo commands here so as you can see uh, by clicking undo and redo I can um, set these uh, I can go back in history or forward in my previous history and uh, set things back the way they were and of course this could be anything let me try several different values here to show you just randomly pick some okay so now I can undo and I could be auditioning each one of these changes okay or I could redo okay and that's a very powerful feature okay another thing I really wanted to show you is the idea that I can navigate to entirely different places in the Kurzweil interface very quickly so here I'm on uh, the source 2 field of the F1 pitch page in layer 2 okay so let me just very quickly go to a different layer entirely and to a different page for whatever reason let's pick a one that I like here okay let's go to the output here on uh, on the first uh, layer um, so we can see we very quickly navigated to that well by cl simply clicking the back button I can go all the way back physically to a different layer on a different page or I can go forward and go back to where I was and this is a 
again, a very powerful feature of VP and one that really enables you to jump around and get your work done quickly. Um, I can't overemphasize how important that is. Once you get used to using VP in, in your whole workflow, your whole creative process, it really changes the way that you think about programming the curves and, uh, and think about programming your sounds and, and so forth. So it will slowly make you, in my opinion, more creative and kind of get the ideas out of your head into the machine a little better. In addition to these backwards and forwards buttons, um, there's also a drop down, which is the same feature but um, allows me to jump around in a nonlinear fashion. I don't have to jump around in order. And it, this is just a, like an internet browser model. Uh, it works the same way that an internet browser does. So um, I just wanted to call uh, your attention to those features. Oh, here, let me just show you this too. Um, just so you know what this bar is about. This is another way to jump quickly to uh, on this vertical bar here with all the page names, very quickly jump to the right tab or you'd see like uh, ENV2. Uh, you can jump right to the to the tab that has the ENV2. So again, this is a very nice way to jump around and, and reason about your program. Uh, same goes for the uh, control list or the control flow. If you click on one of these entries here, it goes quickly to the tab over here where uh, you can see the setting and or change it. Same with this view. These two are really the same thing, except this is a tree view. Uh, so you can actually see dependencies. You can see that uh, Impress is used in Fun2, which flows into Pitch, which is part of Algorithm 20. Uh, that's what, what's, what's going on here. Whereas this is just a linear list, uh, an alphabetical order of the various uh, controls and where they're used. So anyway, I want you to understand that so you can better appreciate um, how to use VP and uh, how it can make your programming experience uh, more complete and uh, uh, just more interesting in general. Thanks a lot. Bye.